Hey, this is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today I am driving the 2021 Subaru Forester. Now, this vehicle is on the more compact side of the SUV spectrum, and frankly, this is a vehicle I think my mom should buy. A lot of people often ask me what I would buy, but I think the better question is, what vehicle would I put my mother in? This is it right here. So in today's review, what I wanna do is talk about the 10 things that I think make this the perfect vehicle for my mom. So let's take a close look right now. All right, so the first thing I wanna say is that my mother is petite like I am. She's about five feet tall and actually shrinking so she may be around 410 at this point but the point is she's kind of on the smaller side of the height scale and so getting into and out of a vehicle can be a little bit of a challenge for her especially because she has some mobility issues so what you really want for somebody who's small is a little bit of a lower climb in so i want to show you again okay i am wearing heels today but it's really easy for me to just kind of sit my butt back hike my leg in and then turn and get into the vehicle and i think this is really good for somebody who a has mobility issues and b is on the more petite side of the spectrum you don't have to use a hand grip you don't have to hold onto the steering wheel to pull yourself into the vehicle and getting out is just as easy there's not a huge step down you don't need a ledge you don't need a step stool you don't need anything so I think that is the first reason why I think this is a great vehicle for, again, somebody who's more on the petite side of things or somebody who may have some mobility issues. Now, the second reason I think this is going to be a great vehicle for my mom or for any petite person is going to be the driving position. In addition to excellent visibility out the front window because this A-pillar is really slim, you have a very customizable driving position. So. Let's start with the steering wheel. So this is going to be a manually adjusting steering wheel. You just pull this lever right there and then you can move it up or down, in or out, depending on your preference. I personally like to push the steering wheel away and um, that gives me plenty of distance between the wheel itself and my sternum so I don't have to worry about the airbags injuring me if there is, heaven forbid, an accident. So, and it also allows me to basically extend my arm fully and just drop my wrist over the wheel. This is technically a really good driving position. So, other than the steering wheel, I really like the adjustability of the seats themselves. So, the seat bottom, this part actually adjusts, so it goes up and down. So you can see it raises or lowers my knees. I like to keep it down. Again, for a petite person, that means in my far forward position, I'm not going to bump my knees against the dash or the underbelly of the steering column. I can also then push the seat down or up, which will make this also accessible for somebody who is taller. Then you have your seat back adjustments as well as your lumbar support. So. I feel like this is a really good driving position for somebody who might be on the more petite side of the scale. Um, my mom, for example, sits on a cushion and I don't think she would have to do that in this vehicle. So this is also a win for the Subaru Forester. Now, another reason I think this is going to be a great vehicle for my mom is because of the cargo area. So this has 28.9 cubic feet of cargo volume and the way that the space is laid out she will have plenty of space for her walker so she typically walks out to the car with a cane and just has the walker in there so that when she gets to a location either my dad or one of my sisters will very easily then pull out the walker for her to be able to use and so in addition to having the space here this load floor is actually really low so that means that there isn't going to be a lot of effort as you pick it up and put it in they currently drive a toyota venza which has a little bit more cargo space but the load floor is a lot higher and i often find myself like having to struggle with the walker to get it in and the lower floor plus the actual cargo volume itself makes this a much more doable vehicle for my parents in terms of putting things in here and having the space to put things in here. This will fit a couple of roller boards, so if my parents would need to pick somebody up at the airport, 
they would be able to do that no problem. It'll fit groceries no problem. And with this optional uh, floor mat in here, trips to Home Depot to pick up plants to plant flowers just got a lot cleaner. So overall, I really like the cargo area for this vehicle, for not only the space, but also for the lower load height. I will also point out that this has a memory setting so you can adjust it whether you want it higher or lower depending on your height. So that is a really good idea for somebody who's on the shorter side of the spectrum or if you just don't want it to go all the way up high when you're parked in a garage. Now the fifth reason I think this is a really great vehicle for my mom is going to be the engine power. This is equipped with a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine that delivers 182 horsepower and 176 pound feet of torque. This is really good off the line in terms of your pickup and it's excellent on the highway when you need to do passing maneuvers. This vehicle feels sporty and is definitely on the peppier side of the spectrum. I think that's something that my mom will definitely appreciate. Um, she's not really a super fast driver, but she's fast when she needs to be. So the engine is number five. Now, even though I put this reason more towards the middle of my list, I think that this is also a really big thing. And that is going to be safety. So I want my mom in a safe vehicle. And frankly, anybody who's buying a car these days should look at safety ratings and safety features on the vehicle that they're buying. So the Subaru Forester gets an IIHS top safety pick. This is the top safety rating that the IIHS gives out because it has good ratings across the board in terms of all of its crash tests that it's done. It also gets superior ratings for its safety technology, um, the eyesight system that includes things like automatic emergency braking and lane centering and things like that. So <laughs> good crash test ratings, an excellent safety suite. This also has a five star safety rating from NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration. So both agencies agree this is a very safe vehicle. All right, so let's talk about that eyesight system a little bit. So it uses radar and cameras around the vehicle to help keep the vehicle in the lane as well as employ adaptive cruise control. So looking at the adaptive cruise control, to engage the system, you press the button on the steering wheel and then you hit the set button. And you can raise and lower the speed that you would like it to be set at by hitting the buttons here. You can also set the distance that you prefer to be from the vehicle in front of you, either closer or further away, um, depending on your tolerances. So once that system is engaged, it's a hands-on level two system that keeps you centered in the lane as well as far enough away from the vehicle in front of you. So it does some steering as well as the speed modulation. And it does a really good job of having a more natural feel to it. So you don't feel herky-jerky. If somebody is gonna cut you off, it doesn't slam on the brakes. I mean, unless it absolutely has to, but it's just more of a natural feel in terms of the speeding up and slowing down. And you don't get into a panic situation where you're like, ah, it's not slowing down. No, no, it, it's slowing down. Um, but I do typically keep my foot kind of hovering over the gas and the brake. I'm not gonna relax. I'm keeping my eyes on the road and you know, just making sure everything's cool, but um, the system does a really good job of being functional. So I think this is great for somebody who may be a little bit more tentative driving on the highway, like my mom, and it will just give her, I think, more of a peace of mind to know that the vehicle is a second set of eyes that's keeping her in her lane and is watching everybody around her to make sure that they are staying in their lanes too. So there are some audible alerts if somebody's in your blind spot, if it isn't recognizing the lane lines, if somebody's pulling further away from you uh, and all that stuff, but I'm totally cool with that. You will also notice in this window right here, it kind of shows you what's going on. So you can see that it's active, you can see that the speed control is working, and you can see that it's detecting a vehicle in front of me. And, um, you know, you don't really have to look at it much beyond knowing that it's working. The vehicle does a good job of just 
doing what it's supposed to do. So I like this feature. I love EyeSight. I think it does really well in stop and go traffic, especially because it will slow the vehicle all the way to a stop. And as long as you're not stopped more than two or three seconds, it'll pick right back up and accelerate as the vehicle in front of you moves away. If you are stopped more than three seconds, all you have to do is just basically tap on the accelerator and the vehicle will start going again. So for me, safety is probably one of the biggest reasons why I think my mom should consider this vehicle. And frankly, anybody should consider it because it's got a ton of airbags, including a knee airbag, side airbags, front airbags, 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 safe structure. And again, that eyesight system is one of the best preventative safety systems in the business. All right. And before I leave the safety segment, I want to talk a little bit about car seats. Now, my mom's never going to have to worry about car seats in the back because neither me nor my sisters are going to have kids, but I have a feeling that some people who are watching this video will probably have to think about car seats, booster seats, or something like that. And while this won't fit three car seats in the back, it will fit two. And if you look at the cars.com car seat ratings, this vehicle is actually rated pretty well for that. So it gets an A grade for all of your forward facing car seats and booster seats, but it does get a B grade for any rear facing seats. And that's mostly because you're gonna have to move this seat forward a little bit in order to accommodate that rear facing seat. So it's gonna infringe on some leg room uh, for this front seat pasture. Uh, but front facing booster seats, it gets really good ratings for that. So I just think that that's worth noting. And if you are somebody who is going to have to worry about car seats in the back, you should always check the cars.com website because they have a team of people who uh, basically look at car seats in every vehicle. And it's really, really helpful. It looks at the ease of use as well as gives a specific letter grade that's easy to understand on how it's going to do with car seats. So, Overall, I think that the safety features are really good on this vehicle. So eyesight is good, car seats fit well, and just generally, yeah, this is one of the big reasons why my mom needs to consider this car. Another great feature on the Subaru Forester, which makes this good for my mom, is the fact that it has standard Apple CarPlay. And yeah, it is a wired-in system, and no, I typically don't like those, but I'm going to say for my mom specifically, that's a really good option because, uh, by the way, she has problems making sure her phone is connected via Bluetooth. So this wired in system is a bit of a fail safe. All she has to do is plug it in and she has access to phone calls, voice to text, text messaging and navigation. No Bluetooth required. All right. First, I want to point out that I am driving the sport trim of the Subaru Forester and I really like the orange accents, the orange stitching, you know, the accent pieces around the air vents. I love the stitching on the seats. I love the cloth seating surfaces. I really like the way this vehicle looks, but this is not going to be the trim that I would recommend that my mother buy. And that is because there are some features that I would like her to get on the vehicle that are not on this sport trim. So I'm sending her to the top trim and that adds $5,000 to the bottom line, but she'd still be spending under $36,000. And I think these final four features are worth it. So first off, I will point out that the sport trim has heated seats and you can do them on high or low, but the touring trim will have a heated steering wheel as well. And uh, because my mother is, a Florida transplant plant who has just moved back to the Midwest. I think she's gonna want the heated seats and the heated steering wheel once winter comes. The other thing I think she's really gonna want is dual climate control. And so as you can see here on the sport trim, you only have a single climate control, which allows the driver to set the climate for the entire vehicle. I think that she's gonna want the dual climate control so that uh, she can turn it to hot if she wants it. And then if my sister or I are in the passenger seat, well, who am I kidding? If my sisters are in the passenger seat, they can cool it down. I'd probably want the heat with my mom. So <laughs> I think dual climate control is gonna be another one of those features she's gonna want. And that is on the touring trim. 
And finally, another feature this vehicle doesn't have because it is the sport trim is driver focus. Now, ostensibly, that feature is meant to monitor driver attention, and it will have an infrared camera that shows up here to monitor your eyes to make sure you're not texting, drowsy, anything of that sort. But what it also does, and this is the more important thing, is it has driver memory settings. So it utilizes facial recognition. And as soon as you get into the vehicle, the driver focus will scan your face, recognize you, give you a personalized greeting, and then automatically return your seat, your mirrors, and your climate controls, as well as your infotainment system to your preferred settings. So we're talking your preset radio stations as well as your seating position. And since my mom will not be the only driver, it would be me and my sisters and my brother-in-law and potentially my husband. Um, yeah, all five of us would have our own preferences when we got into the vehicle. It's not tied to key fob, it is tied to your face. So I think that is the final reason why my mom should get this car and why anybody who has a multi-driver household should get this car. It recognizes five drivers and there's no futzing with seats, controls, or anything. I love that feature. And it's standard on the touring trim. All right, it is time for me to wrap up this review. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you. While I would absolutely recommend that my mother get this vehicle, there is one thing I really don't like on the Subaru Forester, and there is one thing that the Subaru Forester is missing that I really wish it had. So, all right, the thing that I don't like is going to be this. Here I am coming to a stop sign, and the Subaru Forester has automatic stop start. And it's not a great system. It's a little bit clunky, it's a little bit loud, and it's a little bit laggy. Now, I will say there is a button to turn it off, and it's an obvious button. It's not hidden in any screen or anything like that, so that is a bonus. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily a deal breaker because you can turn it off, but you just have to turn it off every time you get in the vehicle. Uh, so that is the one thing that I don't like on the Subaru Forester, and the thing that I wish it had is a round view camera. It has a backup camera and it has a really good backup camera with guides and um, you know red, yellow, green uh, locators. I think that's awesome, but it doesn't have an around view camera. Now, the Subaru Forester has really good visibility out the front. My mom has never had an around view camera before. So somebody who hasn't had it probably isn't gonna miss it, but I just wish that this vehicle had it. And if it did, that would make it 100% perfect. Right now it's like 99.9% .9 perfect. Um, so those are the two things that you should just be aware of that it doesn't have or you know that I don't like. Otherwise, I think the ride and handling is really good. It's got more of a sporty suspension to it in my mind. So you're gonna feel some of the bumps and grooves, but you know, it doesn't bother me. And the fact that this has standard all-wheel drive is going to be great for somebody who lives in the Midwest, like my mom. So I think with the safety and all of the other features that I mentioned that are excellent for somebody who's petite, somebody who has mobility issues, or just anybody, <laughs> anybody out there, um, I, I think this is a great vehicle. And I have been actually trying to tell my mom for the past couple of years that this is her next vehicle. So when this showed up in my garage, I figured, hey, I know the video I'm doing. I'm gonna tell my mom directly and specifically why she should buy this vehicle. So I hope that <laughs> those are enough reasons that you should actually consider this as well. All right, that's all I've got for this week. So what I wanna say is thanks for watching. Don't forget to check us out on the website at pickuptrucktalk.com and I will see you down the road.